Hello students, um, today's agenda is to check your homework. Uh, we're going to be going over input and output of functions and you will be able to do 6.1. So today's objective is students will be able to identify what the input and the output is for different functions. We're not going to be doing anything more than just identifying them. Oh, and we're also going to be creating some scenarios um, for some functions, okay? So, before we even go into uh, the functions, I just want you to recall, um, so what did an equation with two variables look like before? It was y equals 2x plus 3, where, um, the three stands for what you have right now, or the initial point, and this will be the slope. Um, so an example is, I have three dollars and I get two more dollars every day. Okay, so I have three dollars and I get two dollars per day. Uh, right now, I'm not gonna go into detail about that too much because we, um, we have seen it before. But again, I have three dollars. I get two dollars per day. Or maybe I I have three cakes, so this could be one, or it could be I have three cakes in the refrigerator. And I bake, whoops, I bake two more each hour. Okay, so in here, my input would be X, which stands for, for the first situation, the input, let me use a different color, maybe I'll use the black one that I have in here. The input is um, the days. So depending on how many days there have been, or days that have gone by, that's how much money you will have. And the output is this right here, which is um, the total money, total dollars you have, okay, after so many days. If the situation was like this, the input is hours, depending on how many, like let's say five hours have gone by, that means that you multiply the two times the five, which is 10 more cakes, plus three, that's 13 cakes, okay? So the uh, depending on how many hours have gone by, uh, that's the, the output will be the total cakes you have, okay? Total cakes you have after so many hours. So the input will be the hours, the output will be the total cakes. So again, this is um, similar to what we're gonna be looking at, except that there is gonna be a small change. The Y is not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be a Y anymore. Instead, function notation uses f of x. This stands for the y. So f of x equals 2x plus 3. Okay, so it stands exactly for the same thing, but we're going to be using it to figure out uh, tables and other things that this, this type of notation is going to be very helpful. Um, in the following days, we're gonna need something like this. So that's why we're using function notation, okay? Again, but for now, f of x is exactly the same as saying y equals 2x plus three, okay? f of x equals 2x plus three. If you notice, this is exactly the same. All we changed was the y with f of x. One thing, this doesn't mean multiplication. 
It just means the result of this, okay? So it doesn't say that we're multiplying F times a value, okay? That's not what it stands for. It's not multiplication. It's just saying the result, okay? The result of this. Okay, having that in mind, let's go ahead and remember that the objective for today is just to identify the input and the output, and later on we'll, we'll be applying more of the function notation. So identifying for this one. I am driving a car at 40 miles per hour. So my function would be f of... It could be f of x all the time, but I'm just gonna give you some um, some initials, basically, that you would probably be good to familiarize with uh, in case you see them on testing that you see um, either for the state or, or just those tests that you take to um, be placed in, in in colleges. So f of t is equals to 40t. Okay, it means that f of t, the result of multiplying the 40 miles that I drive per t, what does the t stand for? This is per hour. Okay, but in here they put it as time. So that's why they're using the initial T. So I'm driving a car at 40 miles per hour. Before it would be Y equals 40, 40 X, right? Every hour you drive 40, 40 miles. Same thing, what we did was replace this. And basically whatever variable you use in here, you would use in here. So f of t is equals to 40t. Now what is the input in here? Well, what is the, the one that we depend on? The hours, right? And you can just put time or you can put hours. And what is the output? The output is when I multiply the 40 miles per hour times the hours, that means the distance driven. Okay, so the input is the hours, the output is the distance driven. Okay, let's see another one. I am buying watermelons for $6 and melons for $4. So, in this case, we can identify that we're talking about watermelons and melons, and that each one costs something specific, right? So, we're going to say that, again, I'm, I'm going to write it um, in three different ways, like we saw it before, y is equals to 6w, because it's $6 times the number of watermelons I buy, plus 4m, $4 for every melon. But that's the old notation. <laughs> that's um, as a linear equation. Now, uh, if you wanna use it as f of x and y, x stands for watermelons, y stands for melons, then you would say f of x and y is equals to 6x, plus 4y, meaning that the melons cost four. But the best way to relate it is, the function is the cost of watermelons and melons, and see how it relates? The cost of watermelons and melons is equals to six multiplied by the watermelons plus four multiplied by the melons which is um, even better because you relate it to the initial and the price, and you know that the total cost is related to the watermelons and melons that you buy. Okay, so basically this is probably what I would like to see, but I just want you to see how you will relate it to variables that we have seen before, 
and the notation of the y I've seen before. Okay, moving away from that. I am buying watermelons for six dollars and melons for four dollars. So my cost for my watermelons and melons is equals to six multiplied by the, by the watermelons plus four multiplied by the number of melons. Okay. Another one. I buy pencils for forty cents, notebooks for fifty cents erasers for 30 cents and highlighters for 80 cents wow so in here we see more than one item being bought so again is uh, the cost right the cost of what of pencils notebooks erasers and highlighters and my total cost will be, well, for pencils, I pay 40 cents, multiplied by the number of pencils, plus 50 cents for the notebooks, plus 30 cents for the erasers, plus 80 cents for the highlighters. Whoops, I don't have enough space, but you can see the H, right? 80h um, one thing that I want you to notice is that in here we have a specific order okay it's very important that you keep that order in here and in here okay so basically you know what I just noticed that we didn't identify the input which is the goal for today oops the input it's easy to identify because it's these items right here. But you're not going to say uh, P, N, E, and H. You're going to say number of pencils, notebooks, erasers, and highlighters that I buy. So that's what this represents, the number of them, okay? It doesn't represent pencil notebook, but the number of what I get for each one. And the output, what does this whole thing represent? The cost of them, okay? The total cost. Total cost of the items, okay? And let me go back to number two. I'm so sorry that I didn't um, identify the input and the output. So the input, again, is whatever is inside of the parentheses, which is my water, no, number of watermelons I get. Number of watermelons. And melons I buy. And the output is again what does this whole thing represent the cost the cost of buying okay the total cost the total amount i pay for buying for the melons and what amounts that i buy again i apologize for not having that Whew. good thing i cut it on time before the end of the video <laughs> okay now, sometimes you're going to be given the function, and I'm going to ask you to write a scenario. And the ones that I'm going to be giving you, uh, hopefully you have seen in previous classes, because this is kind of like review. But P, L, and W, that looks like a formula we have seen before, right? And so the P stands for perimeter. L stands for length. And W stands for width. So what do you think, by looking at this formula, what do you think this is the perimeter of? Oops. <laughs> My goodness. 
And you're like, oh, I don't recognize this. <laughs> well, it's because Miss Hernandez doesn't write it right. Okay, so P of L and W, and that's how you read this, P of L and W equals 2L plus 2W. So this is actually the perimeter of our rectangle because this is the length and length and this is the width and width. So when I add all two sides, it's L plus W plus L plus W. If I combine like terms, I have two, do, two L's plus, I combine these two and I have two W. So that's those are my two L's and my two W that are here. So I for my scenario, I can say, I find the perimeter of a rectangle by adding twice the length plus twice the length plus twice the width. Okay? I find the perimeter of a rectangle by adding twice the length plus twice the width. Okay? So that would be my scenario in that case. Again, my input is my length and my width. My output would be the total perimeter. I'm not going to ask you to find the input and the output in here, but I, I think I want to write it just so you see it. The input, length and width. And the output, total perimeter okay so that will be it all you have to do is just write the scenario one more and I think again you're familiar with this one also called base times high sometimes so a what do you think a stands for yep area of the length and width is equals to length times width. When you only multiply the length times the width, that will be the area of a rectangle, right? So I will find the area of a rectangle. This is an N <laughs> of a rectangle by multiplying its length times its width. Okay, so that's all you have to do. But again, I just want uh, so that we can apply more of finding the input and the output. What will be the input? The length and the width. And what will be the output? Total area. Okay, so that's it. Um, so I hope this helps for your assignment. And now you can go ahead and do 6.1.